Welcome back to FM21 Redemption. Now we know this series is no longer about simply just developing our own youth players, but the golden generation comes along, it seems a shame not to develop it, and that seems to be what our head of youth development thinks we've got on our hands. Couple of handy little prospects coming through, but in our last episode, we put a poll down in the community tab to ask you whether we should solely focus on purchasing French under-23 players, or whether we should also be raiding our former club Trump Stalin to bring through some of those academy products that we first blooded when they were 15 years old. You voted in favour of bringing in some of our former favourites. Well, in today's episode, we'll show you whether we've managed to make that a reality. So before we talk transfer business, let's show you the form because it's been pretty good. In fact, it couldn't have been an awful lot better since our last episode. Not only have we won all of our game, we've barely conceded a goal either. In our last episode, we brought you back for a 2-0 win against a decent team, Valenciennes. And we were down to 10 men for much of that game. We followed it up with another 2-0 victory, this time against Guangom, another team near the top of the table. We then conceded the only goal that we've shipped in the last 11 games when we beat Shiatoru 2-1. However, the goal that we conceded was from the penalty spot. Since then, it's been shut out all the way. A 5-0 win against Red Star, a 4-0 win against Grenoble, a 1-0 win against Troyes. That was a trickier little game, but they're another team that's well-placed in the table. 2-0 against Alzheimer. And then we've had another 2-0 win, this time against Nîmes. Then we went into some cup action, rotated the squad a little bit for this game. A 6-0 win against a lower league side. And in our most recent fixture, it was a clean sheet again. We got a 2-0 win. And the guy that got the second goal for us has been absolutely superb. In the game since we last saw you, he's now well into double figures for his goals for the season. And if we have a look at his form, you'll see that he has scored in each of his last, what, seven or eight games. So he has been a really astute little transfer. Of course, that means that he will not score today. It also means that we will not keep a clean sheet today and we will lose today because that is just how FM works, especially when you consider that the side we are playing today is Le Mans. Now, in our last episode, I said I wanted to bring you back for a tough game. Today, I've come back not because it's a tough game on paper, but because it's the last game before the winter break in France. The team that we're playing, well, we really should be looking to beat. We are going to be up against Le Mans, who are welded to the bottom of the table. In fact, they've not won a game all season. They've got four draws leaving them on four points. They've already shipped almost 50 goals this season. Clearly, they are going to turn us over today when we have won our last nine on the bounce. So that's the fixture that we've come back for. Fingers crossed we can put on a show. Shall we jump over and show you now the transfer business that we've done? Okay, so in total, we have made three transfers that we've got coming in in the January window. All three of them, former Trump Stalin Youth Academy players. To find the first of them, we're not checking in with Trump Stalin, though we're going to Boda Glimt, who you can see have themselves been busy signing Christian Bernson, former Trump Stalin player. That's another £3.3 million in Trump Stalin's kitty. But the player that we've raided them for is Trond Agner Bratton, who the scouts are less than enamoured with, but I know this player and I know that he has good consistency and he's also got some mental attributes that I'm pretty keen to bring to our squad. We have a leadership void at Toulouse. We have very few players that have any kind of leadership whatsoever. Most of them have got leadership that's below a five. Well, Trondagda Bratton is going to bring in leadership that's between 13 and 16, as well as a bit of determination, a bit of bravery. I think he is going to be a useful defensive option for us in the second half of the season. We've signed him for £1.5 million below his value. Not bad considering Trump style and shipped him out to Milan for £5.5 million. So I was pretty happy with that bit of business. But 
if we do go and visit Trompsdal and we'll be able to find the other two signings that we have made. The first of them is that we've gone back and signed ourselves a left back. Yuri Gratchev has just turned 19 years old. He's now got 15 caps for Russia. It's looking like he's Russia's starting left back now. He's another that's got a very good personality. He's going to offer us a little bit of leadership back there. He might not be playing every single game for us. We're going to have to give him a little bit of time to get accustomed to playing as a left wing back rather than a left back. But he is another player, just like Bratton, that I know plays beyond their attributes, has great consistency. And we've got to remember, PSG were trying to sign Gratchev when he was 16 years old. Three years on, he's going to be joining Ligue 2 Club Toulouse. And again, I think we've got ourselves a decent player. I think we've paid a little bit more for him. We have £3.6 million in total we've gone for Gratchev. So between him and his mate Bratton, it's the best part of £5 million paid. The other player that we're signing, I'm pretty happy that we're getting. It's young Espin Larson Pleem. He has just had a birthday too. He's now 17 years old. Still very young player, fairly professional personality. He's going to bring us some leadership as well. He's going to be a great option as a pressing forward because he's going to bring us teamwork and work rate as well as good dribbling. And we know that this guy is a good finisher. I also think he's going to give us cover both out on the right side and maybe slightly longer term as an inside forward over on the left, cutting in, using his pace, using his dribbling, using his finishing, hopefully to get us some goals. So we've signed three players, two of them still teens, one of them a little bit more experienced and a Norwegian international for around about £7 million. I think that's a good little bit of business, a little bit more than £7 million, be about £9 million we're paying in total. Larson Pleem is the most expensive of them. Let us know down in the comments section what you think of that transfer business. We had a look at some others, like Morton Stervold, the prices we were being quoted for him, we couldn't get anywhere near to being able to match, even though you can see he is a really decent midfield option. You never know. Once we're a league uh, club, maybe we could go back in for one more. But let us know down in the comments, what do you think of those three bits of transfer business? But it's time to head back over to France. Let's have a look at the lineup that we're going to be sending out today against bottom place Le Mans. So this is our lineup today. By no means have we got our best players out on the pitch, but some of them are still incredibly unhappy about being here. Vincent, B.A., Dubois, Ba, they have all got morale that is absolutely through the floor. And what I found on this good run that we've been on is that it's best not to play more than one of them. We seem to be able to carry one player who's got pretty desperate morale as soon as you put a second, a third, or all four of them out on the pitch, the team really struggles, which is a shame because these boys are our best players. Anthony Vincent could easily be playing for us over on the right as an inverted winger or as a playmaker. In Famara BA, by the way, this guy could be crucial to us. As a ball-winning midfielder, he would be great but he will not put in a performance because he is desperate to leave. And in our defence, well, if Patrick Dubois was playing week in, week out, I don't think I'd be signing Trondagna Bratton. But whenever he plays, he plays poorly. He just doesn't want to be here. So the player that we are going to squeeze into our lineup, even though they are suffering from poor morale, is Lansana Bar, who has perhaps not been as good recently as he was during the early part of the season, but he's still got a very decent average rating. Six assists and five goals in his 12 starts. He seems to be the one that's able to put his off-field issues behind him and step over the white line and play well. He's still got clubs interested in him, although it's a loan offer from a league 1 club. Well, as soon as that transfer window opens, I think we've got decisions to make because I don't know whether it might be worth actually cashing in on some of these players rather than just having quality sat on the bench. Or is it better to just bide our time, try and get promotion without them this season, 
hoping that they might come round once we're a league owned club. Again, let me know down in the comments, what would you do, cash in or keep? I mean, these players are very, very young, but the time has come for us to go and see how we get on. If we were to win, it would be a very welcome boost to us going into the winter break. We're on 49 points with six clear of second place Brest. We're 10 points clear of the promotion playoff places. Let's not throw it all away today. Okay, we are underway. We are at home against the bottom of the table side who've not won a game this season, have shipped nearly 50 goals and have only drawn four games in the entire campaign. And we're halfway through the season. I'm predicting we're going to go down 2-0 in this game. Hopefully, that's just my natural-born pessimism at play. Our wing-backs have been playing pretty well in our run of victories. This right-back, by the way, Kyrgyzstan, he's looked a lot better. He had a pretty sticky start to his time with Toulouse, but he's been a lot better recently. He's even got himself on the score sheet, as well as getting a couple of assists. So he seems to have settled to playing slightly more advanced as a right-wing-back rather than a conventional right back and he has helped create the first chance of the game we've had four shots not hit the target yet we're hurtling towards 20 minutes and you can see the highlights are not exactly flowing we've got one now though could be a set play and we've got Bar over the ball he's going to sling one in it's been cleared it's come back to him he can't get the ball into the box he's going to have one more go what can he do he's tightly marked He's been tackled. Now he's slung it over. We don't have enough in the box. We've retreated back to our positions, but we're building up again. Maybe that wasn't the highlight. Here's our left back. He slid it through. This guy. How many games has he scored in a row now? Is that eight? Goodness me, Al Blushi. Looking very, very good. This is a player that I'm confident could play league and football if we get promoted i reckon at six foot five he's got just enough pace about him to be a threat in behind he's got great finishing obviously aerially he's great but he's also pretty creative lots of the goals that we scored this season have involved him withdrawing from outside the box and playing nice little through balls to our on rushing wide players it's been a nice feature of our play and he's pretty critical. We've got Bath that can also play up front. And we've got Larson Pleen coming in in January. Which means we've got some decent options. There's the little turn of pace that we talked about. He can get in behind the defenders. And Bath drifted in from his left wing. And I predicted a 2-0 defeat after 23 minutes. We're 2-0 up. And Al Belushi... It's been the difference maker. That's what I talked about, about the midfield orchestrating from Chan. Great searching ball through. That was a decent attempt. But Ba tucks away the rebound nicely. So 2-0 now. Here's our little right back. He's picked it up down the right-hand side. He's slung in across. Alba Lucy's had an effort. And I think that will just about do us for half time. No, we've got one more highlight before we hit the break. We're building from the back. Here is Kyrgyzstan, he's head, headed wide, Karwat's cut inside, he's searched out Bauer, we're a little bit short of numbers up front. He's gone down and won a penalty though, and you know who's going to be taking it. Let's put the, the curse on him, because he hasn't missed one yet for us. How's the big man going to do this time? He's tucked another one away. That could be his fourth penalty of the season. His 18th goal of the season, second of the game, 3-0 up. I reckon we might be able to rest a couple of those players like Labate who look like they are struggling a little bit for the second half. That's a good half's work there and we're going to tell the boys exactly that. We're going to make one little sub and we'll see you back out there for the second period. Okay, we're back underway for the second period. We're straight into the highlights and we've made our little change. We've taken off David Labate because he played a lot of football he's been struggling for fitness and at 3-0 up at half time I'm going to say there's no need to risk him although Lamont have started pretty brightly in this second period 
Going pretty close with that first effort. And the highlight is not over. We've got a little bit of defending to do before we're going to declare this game done and dusted. Let's have a look at the table as well. Brest seems to be drawing nil-nil with Niort. And Niort are only 15th in the table. If that result could stay the same, that would be Brest's third draw on the spin, which has allowed us to open up a little bit of a gap at the top of the table. Eight points it'll be. Ten points ahead, crucially. Of dropping into the playoffs we're on 71 minutes i think the boys are just seeing out the game but we've got ourselves a little short corner routine we've got cham playing it into a carvot our right winger who's not really had a decent run in the team since we bought him in on loan it's a constant little one two three week niggly injuries i think maybe if we were to go up we wouldn't bring him back in for next season because he just doesn't get out onto the pitch consistently enough, even though he has got some great attributes. We're now getting into the last 15 minutes of the game. We've headed the ball clear. And Al Belushi's won it. And drawn a foul that's going to lead to them having a man sent off. I reckon that's going to be our note to make our last two couple of changes. We're going to get Salim Chan off. We're going to bring on Infamara B.A., Great subs we can bring on. They're miserable, but great subs nonetheless. And I think to protect old Carvot, we will bring on Tony Vincent. Tony needs a little change, I think. We'll make him a playmaker rather than a winger. And at 4-0 up, that should be enough to see us home. Ten minutes to go. Here is big Tony. He's laid it back out to the fullback. BA's involved as well. We can... Sling the ball into the box, can we? Belushi's had another effort. He's six foot five. He's always a threat in the air. Maybe that wasn't even the highlight. By the way, the other thing that I think has gone very, very well this season is moving to a back three. It's not what Toulouse played when they were in the top flight last season. It's not a formation we played at Trump's, darling. But my goodness, it has looked pretty solid defensively. This could be, if we can hold out for the next nine minutes, yet yeah, another clean sheet for us. And Al Belushi has netted his hat-trick and their goalkeeper has had a little bit of a howler. You've got to feel sorry for Le Mans. Four points at the halfway point of the season. They're as good as down already. Their morale must be lower than our transfer want -aways. But we've shown them no mercy. 5-0. An XG of almost four. Well, look, we've been watching this series long enough to know that things don't normally go as well as this. So we are going to welcome a run of form like this with open arms. We're going to keep morale up and not just say they've done well. We're going to say that we are very pleased. They have had a good afternoon out there, the boys. And crucially, Brest have dropped more points. The gap at the top of the table is eight with 18 games remaining. We've got reinforcements coming in just a few days' time. We've got a few weeks' break where we can recharge some batteries and do a bit of training with the boys before we go into the second half of the season. Join us for the next episode where the wheels may well have come off or we might be casting our thoughts forward to what life might be like in League 1 next season. Maybe... Or even start to think about FM21 Redemption.